And there was a couple of interested gentlemen in the area that wanted to see a performing arts center uh, within the, this area. And they started the progress, or excuse me, they, they started talking to the individual who actually owned the theater. And through negotiations, managed to come up with a price and bought it. Um, part of the negotiation was that when it was purchased and when he was paid off, he would donate X amount of dollars back, and he did, a large lump of sum of change. And um, that's how it started, and then the two gentlemen took it a step further, brought some local people in, had sort of a discussion, I can still see the newspaper article, um, when there was about 100 people down in the other part of the theater listening to ideas and concepts and, you know, this kinds of thing, and that's how it started. <laughs> well, as we were talking earlier, um, I think there was probably two or three things that impacted us pretty heavily. One, of course, was the timing because we started this concept or the idea right before everything went economically south um, in the state, the, the country, the housing, whatever, yeah. everything. And so because the market turned, then we lost a, a gentleman who actually was going to lease back a portion of the building um, for a commercial um, interest, and he was going to be paying rent to us, which was going to make our life a lot easier. So we, had, uh, we lost that. So then the third thing that impacted it was you had a group of very interested and um, passionate people about what we were going to do, but we were a little shy on experience, and um, Joe wasn't here at that point, and yeah. he's got a lot more experience with theater. At the time, it was basically a bunch of retired people. <laughs> you know, us good retired people. <laughs> so that, those were the things that really kind of put us in a tailspin. Not, not really a tailspin, but more of a, a, it was much more challenging the first couple of three years because we had to keep our heads above water and figure out while we were doing that, how we were going to go forward. Well, the electrical system was the first big challenge because um, it's a very old building and the electrical was not up to code. Um, and that, that's still an ongoing somewhat. Most of it is done, but the hard part about that is that's not something you can bring people in and go, look what we have done with all this electrical. And it's all inside the walls, it's all inside cupboards and cabinets, and I mean, we're for a theater, you have huge amounts of power, and it needs to be clean power because, especially in this day and age, all the media stuff you use is very sensitive, so it has to have nice, clean power. And they, we've, we've done through spending a lot of money and some donations have pretty much got over that hurdle. Yeah, the, um, you know, the, when, we, when we lost the guy that was going to lease and pay us rent, then they closed it. And once you close a building, now when it, you go to restart, all of a sudden you have to go from the year that it was built to the year that you're in, and you have to meet all the code updates. Mm -hmm. And that's been huge because there were things that probably were not anticipated in being done to the building early on that we have since had to do. So basically, yes, the electrical, all the conduits been put in, the wires have been pulled, we have all new, uh, the main panels are all new. Um, uh, most of the sub-panels are in, I believe. Um, and all of that stuff, those panels were um, pretty much donated. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, the community has been, been supporting us all the way along. Well, um, the, if, if you got through this back wall, there's a, there's a large theater, a full stage. Um, we could do full productions like off-Broadway shows, uh, we could host musicians, we could um, do conferences. Right now a lot of our businesses have to hire like Calusa Casino or other places to do just a presentation to all their employees. Having something right here in town that's a lot closer, you don't have to you know, pay for all that transportation. And then also um, there's a lot of shows that play, uh, you know, to the smaller venues and the smaller towns that we could have um, entertainment coming from out of town in here. Um, and my favorite thing, my personal favorite thing, is this community is huge uh, in the arts. 
and the performing arts especially, the bands, uh, the theaters that are here. We have award-winning theaters in this little town that go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Sacramento and Roseville theaters and beat them. Uh, we take away their awards and to have a, have a bigger house to play in would be just huge, just huge. Can't wait. You have to understand um, that the building is being put back together, it's like it's in three portions. You have the lobby and the restrooms and the snack bar, that's one. Two would be this black box. And the third portion is the Performing Arts Center, which is behind this wall. So in order to um, start uh, bringing an in income off the building itself, we have to finish the front two thirds, the box and the lobby. And we figure that at this point, if it, if it was cold cash, we'd probably need about between 250 and 300,000 to finish. That does not include the Performing Arts Center. That's another, um, that's another I'm phase gonna, phase or hurdle or however you want to approach it. It's, it's a much larger um, effort. But we, are, we have phases, we have uh, steps in the process. So we have that planned out and we know that that's way down the road. But the biggest part is to get stuff going inside the building, to be able to open the building up and say, hey, come to the Sutter Theater to see this show or, or to be at this event. Um, once that gets going, then we have revenue and we can start planning and we can also show potential uh, sponsors. There's already an interest here. There's already people here. We can, we can do this. So. The other thing is um, when, you, when I talk about the cash saying you need two fifty to 300000 we don't really run on that kind of a basis. We haven't up until now anyway. We, um, we'll take donations and then we have a pretty good track record of taking whatever donation we get, going around to a few local businesses or construction um, entities and asking for help. And um, I, I can only think of one time that I was ever turned down. We need to say thank you to the people that have um, worked with us so far and that have stuck with us because it's not been either easy or simple or quick. And you know how it is when you're trying to accomplish something, the longer it takes, the less the enthusiasm and the fewer the bits of help you get. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I do believe that, you know, the board and the volunteers have shown an adequate commitment and perseverance and I think as a result, that's why people have stuck with us and stuck behind us and continue to support. But the arts is, you know, the, the community of artists, we do fundraisers all year. And the people, um, lighting, sound, all the actors, they donate their time. And we've been doing it for mm -hmm. seven years and we put on five, six shows a year. All these very talented people come out and work uh, to make these shows fun and exciting and, and, and they keep coming and the audiences keep coming, so we know we're on the right track. You know, it's like the art gallery. It's now starting its sixth year. I just finished the uh, totals and um, we actually, out of that little gallery, sold $13,384 worth of artwork last year. I mean, knock me over with a feather. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, 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 being a retired nurse, I don't, you know, this is not my forte, really, okay? But those artists continue to work and, um, and we've grown every year for six years. So I hands off to everybody that volunteers and helps.